All right, so we're on to our next presenter, um, building an intuitive web-based musical instrument with Ashish Dubey. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, sorry, guys, uh, just setting up my display. All right. So uh, I'm Ashish, and uh, is that better? Okay. So uh, I'm Ashish, and uh, I'll be presenting uh, some of my work that I've been doing uh, on a project that aims to be uh, a very easy um, musical instrument and a tool for composition, uh, it's like basic composition for people who don't have a lot of uh, musical knowledge. So um, I'll be talking about uh, how the idea came into being and uh, how I built it. And uh, basically, I'll also show a, a small demo and uh, what are the future possibilities. So I'll just uh, take a minute uh, to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Ashish, and uh, I work as a software engineer at Grofers, which is a retail company based out of India. I work with the DevOps and release engineering team there, so it has nothing to do with audio music stuff. But uh, like most of you, uh, I have some interest in audio and tech, uh, so this is some stuff that I do in my spare time. So um, the idea began um, by me having a desire to have a way to basically generate some music out of uh, visual artifacts, like a painting. Um, the idea was like really vague, and honestly, I didn't know, I didn't have any clue how to build it. So um, that just lingered on. Um, and um, over time, I came across this uh, application uh, called Music Mouse. Um, that is, uh, in, in case uh, you guys don't know, Music Mouse was an application built by Laurie Spiegel um, back in the 80s, and as an as a very intuitive uh, musical uh, instrument. Uh, for people who don't know, uh, who don't want to like, learn music theory and play music. And recently, uh, Tero, um, who's, who's a prolific music hacker, uh, he uh, wrote an emulation of that. And uh, so, so this, kind of, um, this kind of helped me um, scope my vision, uh, scope my direction to basically uh, building something uh, that is easy to play. Uh, plus, um, there's some visual uh, there's, there's some uh, visual painting artifact also involved in that. So uh, here, I, here is uh, wh where my project started. Um, it didn't look like this at all. Um, also, it wasn't called Pastel Loops. Um, it was a very, uh, very simple interface uh, which had a canvas, uh, a white canvas, which was attached to a synth node, um, which was generating sawtooth waves. Um, but over time, uh, I, I worked on it, um, and uh, it seemed uh, like it could be an application which could be used by uh, musicians or also people who uh, are just getting introduced to music uh, in a funny, intuitive way. So um, yeah. So uh, this is just uh, calling out. Um, bef so while I was working on this, I uh, came across this book uh, by Thor. Um, and uh, basically, the contents of this book, uh, the instrumentation model uh, because I, I'm, not a, I'm not a researcher. Uh, so uh, this, this kind of gave me a structural approach to building this instrument uh, as just a web developer. So this kind of helped. So, uh, so I'm going to uh, talk about um, my, my application in terms of uh, different components. Um, I'll start with the user interface, what, what it is and what it lets you do. Uh, so basically, it's the canvas uh, with basic drawing tools. Uh, draw, erase, clear, canvas. And uh, you have a panel for scale selection. Uh, a person can choose a scale in which they want to play. Uh, and uh, there's a brush texture selection, which also uh, modifies the sound. And uh, volume temp tempo controls uh, for basic uh, musical controls. And uh, all of this uh, was built with uh, Tone.js, P5.js, and uh, React, and design, uh, basic stuff. Um, I'm going to uh, pull out uh, a different tab to just uh, show what it looks like. 
So uh, it's also live. I'll post the link on the Slack channel so you guys can play with it. So basically, this is the canvas, and uh, there is a, there's a there's a texture which is already selected, and uh, so basically, uh, as you can see, uh, when whenever you draw uh, uh, the the y the y point of the coordinates, they map to a note in the selected scale. So that's how uh, the music is played. And uh, the feedback is real time, which actually uh, helps you to like use it as an instrument and like actually uh, improvise with something else. And uh, people can uh, explore the scales, uh, the classical scales that are there uh, in this in this panel. And everything has everything has a corresponding uh, visual change associated with it. Um, I could uh, do this and. And uh, the other other part is uh, it also lets you uh, choose which sounds you want to make uh, with this instrument. So uh, and that is also correlated with the the vi one one visual parameter on the canvas, which is the texture of the brush. So I could cha change the texture, and uh, it also changes the sound. And I can also use this uh, as a composition tool. Uh, by that I mean uh, I can I can uh, have the feedback as I draw, and I can also uh, play whatever I have composed. So, so yeah. So a person uh, who doesn't have a lot of uh, musical background, they can choose from the predefined scales, uh, but somebody who is a is an advanced musician, and they want to uh, customize what scale they want to play, what pitch collection they want to choose their notes from. They can also uh, just create the scales and uh, draw from that. So uh, yeah, so this is what it looks like. Um, so I'm going to move to another section. Um, so what are the mappings? Uh, as I as I already uh, mentioned. Uh, wherever you draw the y, the y axis uh, corresponds to the note uh, that is being played from the from the uh, scale selected, and uh, whatever is being played, the timbre properties of that can be changed by uh, changing the brush brush texture, right? And uh, yeah, that that's what the mappings are. And uh, I wanted to make it uh, easy uh, for people, uh, so yeah. So while I wanted to uh, give uh, the possibility of exploring different sounds in this uh, application, I also wanted to keep it easy for people to use it. And also, like, I wanted to uh, make sure that there's a visual correlation between the sound that people select. Uh, so the interaction, the kind of interaction that I wanted in this application was that uh, imagine a person uh, changes uh, the texture of the brush uh, smoothly or incrementally, like a like a thinner to thicker brush, I I would want the the sound also to reflect that property, um, and I didn't want to um, give the entire control uh, to the user. Uh, like I didn't want to overwhelm with them with the details of uh, customizing a synth or anything else. So uh, I I generated some sounds uh, also also just to add another uh, element of uh, exploration. Um, basically. Uh, I used Google Magenta's GAN synth, uh, which is uh, the machine learning model that lets you um, generate acoustic sounds from a latent space of um, sp latent space built by training uh, several thousands of uh, acoustic instruments. Um, so I generated uh, two different sounds. One was percussive, which would point to a thinner brush te texture, and one was something like a wind-like instrument, uh, which would um, which would map to a thicker brush texture, and uh, basically generated a dozen of sounds which would um, interpolate between them. And as the brush texture changes, um, your sound also changes. So that that's the that's the kind of interaction I wanted in this uh, in this uh, application, so as to make it uh, really easy for people to explore different sounds. So uh, if we talk about the future possibilities, um, right now. Um, Right now, when you when you when you do a playback uh, after you've drawn everything on the canvas, uh, it scans from left to right, um, which means that it's an X Y uh, 
XY playback method, and uh, I would I would like to explore uh, what a time-based playback would look like, so as to not just not just play everything from left to right, but also like play as it was drawn on the canvas. So that's one of the things that I'm going to uh, uh, explore. And canvas stacking for long, long sequences, what that means. Uh, so right now, there's a very short canvas uh, that people can work with, and which means that. Uh, People who want to like use it in a live live setting, they might uh, they might find it limiting. So I would want uh, multiple canvases which can be stacked serially or parallelly, so as to give like more room for uh, more room for experimentation. Uh, real time collaborating maybe, uh, and uh, uh, another another use of machine learning I could uh, think of in this was would be uh, not like. A bit different from uh, sound synthesis, but uh, towards melody generation. Uh, so, again, like Google Magenta project has another model called Music VAE, uh, which I can potentially use uh, to suggest uh, what are the nice representations on the canvas, uh, which would sound sound uh, better than what user is drawing. So, yeah. So, um, where where do we stand with this? Um, um, I haven't done a lot of uh, user studies yet uh, or given it to a lot of uh, musicians uh, for playing with, uh, but I have given it to some visual artists and uh, my five-year-old nephew and uh, my Airbnb host last night. And uh, they, they, they kind of uh, got engaged with this uh, application and they found it uh, easy to like, just play, just sketch away and like, play something random. So uh, that's that's where it is right now, and I'm hoping to actually like uh, work with some uh, musicians and uh, see where it goes. Um, hopefully, it can be used somewhere. And uh, if I have time, I would love to uh, play some. This is just like me uh, jamming with a backing track. So yeah, it's, it's not that bad. <laughs> um, lastly, uh, it's live. Uh, you can uh, use this address to like play with play with it, and uh, it's also open source. So in case uh, somebody is like interested in seeing how it's implemented, um, or they want to like uh, send some pull requests to improve it, uh, which is there is this room for a lot of improvements. Uh, feel free, feel free to uh, yeah, catch hold of me. Cool. Thanks. And do we have any do we have any questions for Ashish? Uh, why did you still didn't sign up for the jam session tomorrow? I can consider it now. <laughs> Um, hi, thank you. Um, first of all, I really ap appreciate this um, any kind of project that enables the this concept of musicking, as Norbert was mentioning earlier. Um, and about this project, from a more of interaction point of view, um, your input is uh, I can describe it more like a continuous motion is based on, but. But the output is mostly based on discrete pitches. So in other words, it's, I can describe it as more discontinuous. Yeah. So don't you think that it's a little bit counterintuitive, this input and output relationship? Um, yeah, I mean, if I, if I think about it, it is. Uh, but um, I, I wanted to like, uh, kind of uh, mimic uh, the classical instruments in a way, classical acoustic instruments. Um, I mean, I could also like uh, have a continuous wind instrument associated with it. But uh, I just wanted to start simple, and uh, what, what, you, what you just said makes sense. Uh, maybe it could be an exploration, and we can like test it out with people, how, what, they, what they find better. Yeah, thanks. 
have you considered doing any MIDI out so that um, a sound design person can translate what they do in a DAW with another synthesizer or a piano? Right. So, so uh, the underlying uh, data structure that I use uh, is easily um, convertible to a MIDI-like uh, sequence. Uh, it's not there yet, uh, but yeah, I can I can build that. But yeah, I've, I've thought about that. Thanks. Yeah. And I'll ask one more. And that's uh, I I saw you made a decision not to put a grid on the thing and just leave it completely blank. And I was curious what your your ideas on that were. Right. So so uh, I I uh, the first uh, interaction that I wanted to uh, give the users was to like just paint away uh, and not be like boggled by other details. I, I did think about uh, lining up keyboard next to the canvas so that it's at least like mappable to the keys. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to like show any details. Maybe, maybe uh, I could try that too with some people. Yeah. I but yeah, more, that, more was, about what your, that was what the rationale behind it. Yeah. All right. Do we have any other questions? Thanks, guys. Thank you.